Hello. Hello, Rob. Thanks so much for taking the time. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you. So we're really excited about the remix of the Black Album. With this new whiskey, it's kind of a remix of uh, a, a whiskey, a, a spirit from 2017. Can you kind of go into the history of the Blackened Whiskey for us? Uh, yeah, so the, so the Blackened Whiskey was uh, an original collaboration that started with uh, the, uh, the late legendary Dave Pickerel and, of course, the band Metallica. Yeah, and uh, Pickerel, he was yeah. um, a distiller for Maker's Mark. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So he was at Maker's Mark for 14 years, uh, had his hands in countless, countless brands. You know, he really, he really was, uh, you know, you know, as, as he kind of self-proclaimed, he was the, the Johnny Appleseed of, of the whiskey industry. And, and of course, you know, we're, we're all, we're all very close, you know, we're close knit group, you know, as far as uh, master distillers, I was working, uh, I was making single malt whiskey in Denver, Colorado, um, and created some other, other brands as well. Um, and with Dave, it was, uh, when when the band first came up with the idea to create a whiskey, it was really important for them to to really make a whiskey that was going to stand on its own. They didn't want to go to a, a large company and and just have them make a Metallica line and, and slap a Metallica label on it. You know, just like everything the band does, they want it to be a thousand percent. They want it. They want to um, have the ownership of it and to uh, and and to allow it to stand on its own, just like their music does. And so that's what Dave, you know, Dave brought to the to the table, and now myself. Um, and that was creating a world-class American whiskey blend, you know, and that's, that's a blend of, um, you know, Tennessee bourbon, uh, you know, Indiana bourbon, Indiana rye. We've got Canadian rye in there. Um, a lot of these history in this we, bottle. Mm -hmm. Say again? A lot of history in the bottle, right? Yeah, like and, and a, lot a lot of, of great artists. A, a lot of spirits that are very close to people's hearts. So not only yes. are you thinking about Metallica as you know, not only like a brand, but people too, right? Like yeah. people that you want to show respect to and reverence, but you also have hundreds of years of culture that are going into this bottle that you're producing. That must've been an amazing amount of pressure on you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's, um, it's also very exciting. You know, you, you, you have all these great whiskeys to work with. Uh, you know, I, I kind of, the way I look at it is like making a, a, you know, like a gourmet meal. You have all these great ingredients that are fresh. They stand on their own um, in, in their own ways. But when you put them together, it creates something phenomenal. That's exactly what we are doing with our whiskey is taking, you know, different aged whiskeys, different types of whiskeys, uh, different mash bills, and then blending them all together. Uh, you know, and honestly, we could have stopped right there, but we, you know, I'm a big fan of cask finishing where you take that whiskey that's already been aged. Uh, in our case, you know, an average around eight years in white American oak with a number three char. And then you do a cask finish. You can take, you know, there's so many ways to do that. And I've, and I've messed around with a variety of cask finishes throughout the years. And uh, and what we settled on was uh, black brandy, which is a Spanish brandy. So now we've got these like, you know, the, the nice balance of the sweetness of the corn. You've got that spiciness of the rye. Um, and then you've got this nice backbone of flavor from the, from the brandy cask finish. Um, and then that's where, you know, we could have stopped there too, but you know, that's where we get innovative and you want to go up that one summer. extra level, right? Like you want yeah, to, we're take, gonna take it, it to 11, 11. man. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You want to make Gene Simmons <laughs> jealous, right? Like yes. I know that after I heard this, I was like, Gene Simmons is throwing a chair across the room right now with this <laughs> idea. What did you guys do? Uh, it, you know, it's great. And it, it's, it's, for me, it's exciting. I've been making whiskey for about 15 years now. Um, wrapping my around my mind around this concept um is kind of a melding of, of of all these worlds you know my my history before i was in the in the whiskey business i was i was in the music industry i used to uh you know was start out as a stagehand rigger stage manager uh tour manager um event you know production you know uh promoter no no rock and roll for rob it, no sex drugs and rock and roll you're hunting down lost luggage <laughs> uh, well no it's no it was definitely uh definitely a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of late nights um uh, <laughs> but you know I, i'll tell you man the um kind of the full circle though is that you know now we're using you know music we're now using not only is it whiskey and i've got you know these these skills of making the whiskey but now we're tying in this whole other innovation and this whole other level of tying in uh, sonic enhancement, which we, uh, our process, our particular process, we call black noise. And that is where we are playing. Uh, we we uh, have a proprietary device created by the sound company that provides the, that makes the equipment for Metallica's wall of sound. 
Um, so if you've ever been to one of their concerts or, or any, any concert of that magnitude, you know, and you're walking by the, the, the speakers and you feel that, that vibration in your chest, you're actually feeling motion and movement. That's what we're doing with the, the sonic enhancement equipment is, is mimicking that vibration uh, through, the, through low frequency sound. So, you know, anywhere between four and 11 Hertz, we are, we are playing, of course, Metallica music uh, and every playlist is different. You know, you look at- uh, With the different at, batches, right? Correct, yeah. So, so you batch, batch like a, 100. Yeah, oh, so you got like a batch. Yeah, so here's a batch one, uh, you know, this, um, that, this was actually from the, the Black Album. 114 was the Black Album. Uh, we played the entire Black Album to, uh, to the batch. Uh, the, the band members will take turns selecting a playlist. So you can go to blackandwhiskey.com, look up the batch number of the bottle that you have and see which band member or, or myself um, has selected that playlist. And you can actually, there's a little uh, Spotify icon or an Apple Music. You can take a photo of it. It will populate that playlist of the music that we use to sonically enhance the batch that you're actually enjoying at the moment. It's like you're drinking with your drink. That's a yes. <laughs> little soundtrack. That's awesome. Yeah, it, oh, is, it is so much fun, you know, just to, to see where it works, you know, and if you think about it, um, you know, like here's the, here's the front of the black and bottle. These are all sound waves, um, you know, a visual representation of, of sound movement. And this is an actual sound wave of James Hetfield singing the word blackened. So that's a, that's an actual sound, the actual sound bite. But we, what we've done. But if you think about it, that's all. These are these are all peaks and valleys. That's that's yeah. that that represents motion. You know, that's that's movement. So if you're if you got low frequency, and you're just vibrating the barrel, that's 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 vibrating in peaks and valleys. You know, depending on the song, depending on the playlist that uh, you know that they they selected, that's the interaction with the wood. That's you know, however it's doing that. So it is going to make these changes. And we, you know, the, for me, it was about the science. You know, we did a, a control barrel where we, we took the same whiskey. We put it in two separate barrels. One barrel, we applied the black noise sonic enhancement process to. The other one, we did not. They were in separate rooms. We took samples from both those whiskeys. We sent them off to the lab. And every single one of the nine flavor profile markers we're looking for from the wood were enhanced in our black noise sonic enhanced barrel. That's crazy, man. It's like talking to your plants, right? But in a much more rock and roll party way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen um, studies where, you know, they'll they'll show uh, molecules of water down at the molecular level, and they'll and they'll show like, you know, if, if you're shouting at it and how it changes, or if if you're singing to it in a different way, you know, like the molecular ch chain, you know, the molecular structure of the the water molecule will change. So you know, you know that the music is making a, 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 a at least in motion with the barrel, it does make a difference in the, in the flavor profile, depending on the song and the playlist. That's so fascinating. You know, the more I get to talk to people in the industry, whether they brew beer or whether they distill spirits, um, you know, there's a couple of commonalities between everybody. It's a passion for what they do, obviously, but also it's a love of science. It's a natural yes. curiosity. And looking at your record collection right there, you're obviously like a, a man with good taste where where is that balancing act that you constantly have to walk between new you know innovation and the tried and true this is what a bourbon tastes like this is what whiskey is supposed to be do you find yourself having to walk at kind of a thin line or 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 is it just more relaxed than i think you know, it, it's interesting. The, um, what's great about being able to make whiskey in the United States is that, you know, ever since the end of prohibition, you know, the, the, the regulations really are, are by category, um, what, what defines um, a certain whiskey. Like, for example, bourbon has to be a minimum of 51% corn. Uh, the rest of it could be more corn. It could be more, it could be barley, it could be rye. Um, and it has to be aged no less than two years in white American oak with a number three char. That's a, that's a straight American whiskey. Um, and bourbon can be made anywhere. You know, there's a misnomer that, that bourbon could, has to be made only in Bourbon County. So, you know, as long as you're following the, the simple guidelines um, set, set forth by the, you know, federal regulation, everything else is sky the limit. You know, you can, you can be as innovative as you want to be. You can do cask finishes. You can, you can apply sonic enhancement. You can take it out and put it on a ship and, 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 and you know, and there's, you know, there's whiskeys that do that. Um, so, there's there's so many different ways that we can take as long as we're staying within the guidelines 
of the whiskey category that we, you know, we've selected, which we are an American blended whiskey. Um, from that point, we can we can have all sorts of fun with it. And I feel like we're just scratching the surface with the sonic enhancement, what we can do with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really cool. Good. I'm, I'm yeah. glad to hear that you're not getting a lot of pushback from the community because you can be as creative as you want to be because, you know, this is America, damn it. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, and there is, there's certain aspects you're going to get pushed back anytime you're doing an innovation, something new, you know, the way I, I, I look at it sometimes, um, you know, when, when the car was first invented and people are used to, you know, riding horses and mules and they see their first car, they're like, there's no way I'm going to step foot in that thing. Well, now, you know, fast forward 150 years later, 200 years later, almost everybody has like one or two cars or one or two machines of some sort. And it's an accepted thing. Whereas, you know, at a time when you're riding your horse, you're like, no, I'll stick to my horse. Thanks very much. You know, innovation tends to, um, you know, people tend to fear innovation until it becomes the norm or until it becomes accepted uh, a little more. And I think that's what's great about this kind of innovation is that we are taking traditional me methods of making whiskey, but now we're, we're applying this whole other cool t technology um, that, that is really cutting edge and innovative. And, and I think, uh, I think what's fun about that is when people actually listen to the science behind it and why it works, um, they'll understand that, you know, you can, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. There's, there's just, you know, again, we're just scratching the surface. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'll let you go, but one more, and this question's yeah. kind of for me, you know, back from your music days. I, and you know, it's funny. I actually did work with Metallica as a stagehand. Uh, pushing their road cases on stage you got your metallica shirt and you're like okay you are you're assigned to this band and and you're only touching their stuff and that was in 96 um uh, in san jose california and nothing and but gentlemen it. no doubt nice you guys. Know, i i never got to meet them that at, then you know they were i mean i got to see them from afar and i was like i was a, you know i'm still a huge metallica fan but i was uh i was for me that was like that was epic you know that i got to work that show and 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 here you are now, these years later. Like, who would have guessed that whiskey would have brought you full circle from working behind the stage at a Metallica concert to sharing, um, you know, like uh, shots with with Lars and having their name on one of your bottles? It's pretty cool. It's 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 fascinating, man. I you know, and I, I honestly I feel completely uh, like honored and, and humbled by the whole experience, and and I just I I love. Um, how passionate the band is uh, at everything that they do. And I love that they allow me to have that room to, have to, to you know, for the artistry of making whiskey. You know, they, um, they've been very welcoming with, with their um, allowing me to, to, to create within that, within that realm. And it's been, uh, it's been, a, it's, it's a cool, surreal experience at times. And at the, you know, at, at the same time, I, I'm, I'm remembering to enjoy the moments and, and enjoy, you know, you know, where, where I've come from, where where we are now, and where we're going to, because we're yeah. you know we're we're just starting. Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate you taking the time. Black and whiskey available now at Brown Jug, and look for those batch numbers. All right, yes. find your playlist. They are waiting for you. All right, thank you, Rob. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much.